Hi, my name is Mark Taylor. Welcome to Mark D Maker. Today we're going to be talking about air dry clay. Now, air dry clay is probably the easiest way to get into doing three dimensional sculpture. It's very easy to use. It it dries literally. You you make clay whatever, and it dries with the air. It dries in the air within 24 hours. It's completely dry, no baking, nothing. You can paint it, sand it, drill it, cut it, bend it. I'm going to show you how to do it. Come on, it's going to be fun. All right, so let me show you some examples of some uh, things that I've done with air dry clay. Um, so this is actually a, a, a polymer clay, which requires baking. You can see the pink. Uh, I think it was called Super Sculpty. Um, aluminum foil armature. You just make the shape the aluminum foil roughly into you what you want. And then you finish it off. And I'll show you different methods of doing that. This is air dry clay. Now you can see this white. That's what the, the stuff is that we'll be using today. Super simple to use. Uh, it's paintable. Uh, it's it's fairly light. Um, so air dry clay. This one's air dry clay. Little raccoon looking at a bear looking for a raccoon. A wolf howling. Now the nice thing about using an aluminum foil armature, let's say if you wanted to make this tail straight like this, you simply just snap it right at the weakest connection, break, break, break it, sand it, go back with this stuff, smooth over the transition, and you got a straight tail. Very easy to repair if it breaks. <clears throat> Nice thing is, you know, if you're doing a wood carving, all these little negative spaces would have to be drilled and you really would, you know, that would be some serious work doing a wood carving. But using aluminum foil as an armature, um, it's not that big of a deal and you can get some just beautiful results. This is a little fox that I did, a little guy that I did, and I've also done uh, in the past some people that I worked with. Um, if you can get just a general look of someone, um, especially their outer, uh, you know, get their hair right, you get their basic body style right, you can paint it to look, look like anybody. So the way it starts is, you just take aluminum foil and you just crinkle it up into a shape. So instead of sitting here crinkling foil, I've started a shape. This is going to be a cat. Um, there's a, a, a well-known YouTuber on there and he features his cat sometimes and so I'm going to make this and send it to him. So after you get your aluminum foil shape and it's it's very user friendly because you, you know you start off making your shape let's say if i was making the cat's head very loosely very oversized and very loose and then you just start pinching in the rough shape that you want let's say like some ears we know there's a flat space between the ears <clears throat> Having a reference material in front of you is, is also very good. Um, so roughly, you know, you, you get it roughly the shape you want it. And then you can start tightening it up. As it gets tighter and tighter, the foil gets more firm. Um, you can do it over loosely formed foil 
not a problem. A quarter inch of this stuff over top of it, let it dry, and you come back and you have a very rigid form like so that you can put detail into with a knife, with sandpaper, you can drill it, you can put screws into it. Um, and like I say, if this isn't the tail you want and you want the tail up higher, you grab it, you break it, the foil's holding it together, and, uh, and there you go. If the tail's up or you want the tail down, you could move the legs around too. Matter of fact, this leg was moved once and I dropped it not long ago and, and it cracked. So I'll be repairing that, but that's a good opportunity. If I want to put that leg further back, I can just push it back a little bit more and, and it'll be, I could lay the ears back or down or to the side, however I want. <clears throat> so as this foil starts to compact, you can work in some details and there's no way, you know, the cat's ear is gonna be that wide. So you want to make it more pointed, not a problem. I mean, this is, this makes sculpting so easy. You can just like nip and clip. And, and like I say, the, the armature doesn't have to be perfect. Just enough to hold the quarter inch of clay. And then you can, you can do so much with the clay over top of this. You don't like the ear like that? Twist it like that, not a problem. So, as you see on this one, <clears throat> you just stick a toothpick in if you want to make two pieces, like a head or something. And this will just give you some versatility. You can move the head around and, and let it, uh, you can find the personality that you want. Um, you know, you don't want it to look stagnant like a decoy. You want to add a little personality, a little attitude to it. So now that we talked a little bit about the foil and the armature, let's talk about the tools that you can use to do it. Well, all the craft stores sell these clay modeling tools. And they're almost like little dental tools in a sense. You can see, this is one of my favorite ones here for smoothing uh, tight areas and such like that. And there's all different types of shapes, but you don't have to run out and buy these immediately. Matter of fact, they're not that expensive. I, I, I believe this is actually two sets and they were like, I don't know, $7 and I used the coupon. Um, but the way I started was I, I had a dowel and uh, I made my own tools um, by just shaping them, a coat of polyurethane on them just so the clay wouldn't stick because the, the air dry clay will stick to just about anything. Um, so the polyurethane just makes it easy to, to wipe off, to wash off. Um, just some basic shapes. This is an old paintbrush handle that I, I've used for pushing around the clay to get it to the shapes that I want. Um, and I just whittled on this with the end of a pocket knife or a, um, you know, lay it on a belt sander and, and sand them flat to give me different shapes. And I probably use these more than, than anything else picked up some uh, individual cheap clay tools uh, along the way, just randomly here and there. And, and I actually made this. Now this is actually, um, this is Super Sculpty and three stick pins. And what this is, I uh, use as a tool, hope you can see that. This is a tool that I use for texturing. I put fur texturing on things like, like the gorilla. You can see these texture lines on the gorilla here. And all those little lines look like I spent a lot of time with a little 
like an exacto knife or something and really it was just a couple of seconds with this tool just mashing into the wet clay putting little fur lines on that comes in handy uh, if you're going to do critters with fur and this is just a little piece of brass that I have lightly sharpened to make long cuts if I wanted to cut a long a tube of something or if I have something rolled out and I want to cut it just makes it easier than um, having something really sharp like an exacto knife um, you you really don't need an exacto knife in the process of working with this within when it's wet as it dries you can see that it carves super easy and I'll and I'll get into um, how to do carving you can see it's just like peeling a potato if you ever peeled a potato you can carve 